Some people will see lifting weights as a way of life, a philosophy to build the best version of themselves. And I think we can all agree that in some part, that is true. I think if improving your physical state is going to improve your mental state, one could agree that it's a philosophical journey. It's an actually really important one to take as a human to see how far you can physically push yourself as you don't just learn a lot through your physique, but you learn a lot through your mind, how much you can actually give. And whenever I talk about the selflessness of the pursuit of building an amazing physique, for some reason, Sam Selleck always comes to mind. He's the man who really at this point doesn't need an introduction. The guy who built his fame from just posting hour plus long videos of his workouts without any edits. Except for Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan has no idea who he is apparently. Kind of that Sam Solik does that too. You know who that kid is? Who's Sam Solik? <sighs> Dude, Jamie, you gotta look him up. Sam Solik? Yeah, you gotta look at him. Solik? S-U-L-E-K. Oh, look Jesus. Look at this kid, dude. Jesus Christ. He is like young 20s. Oh, I have heard about him because he used to be a lot smaller mm -hmm. and then got saucy. <laughs> He is probably the top five biggest influencer in the fitness industry right now, just with the gross amount of audience that he has over time. And with this, all the clips being made of him and TikToks, YouTube videos, I mean, everything that's out there, it's hardly possible that he'll ever be forgotten for his physique, of course, but also mostly for his mentality and personality. Don't tell the people around me, but I'm going to go blow up the bathroom. Let's see Andrew Eubanks hit this weight. Uh, hey. Don't distract my spotter. I'm so sorry, man. I'm yeah, so I'll let it slide this time. Okay, okay, come on. Things. Check this guy out. All right, let's go. Okay, that's enough. Yeah. If one forearm is bigger than the other, um, for reasons I think we are aware of, I've never been pregnant or given birth fill him up the pants with some kind of something if you know what i mean fucking if somebody bumps into me instead of saying hey dude hey watch out what are you doing i'm just gonna be like oh what are you doing now it's no joke of course he blew up for his insanely good looking physique at 21 years old but not everybody's gonna be able to remain relevant in social media with just a really sick physique i mean don't get me wrong there's people out there who do that but most time they have an added benefit which typically is not just a physique but a personality that aligns with that physique something that's profound something that's influential and that's really where sam has struck gold in the community because he's not just an amazing physique but he's a very unique personality and one that's kind of stoic if you think about it he's raw laid back and truly authentic if you glance at his channel you see that there's wildly no clickbaity titles literally no thumbnails at all and inside of the videos there's absolutely zero fancy editing or even a small amount of cuts and for a lot of people the videos just kind of turn out to be listening to your friend while he's talking to you in the car and between sets at the gym i feel like it's kind of the way that youtube used to be before the mr beast era and when i refer to that mr beast era i'm talking about the dopamine edits the really quick and fast paced edits that are meant to capture your attention but the value of the content is quite low and clearly originating back to the origins of youtube seems to be working really well for him the guy used to post a back workout and get like 1.2 million views within just a few hours of posting it and those videos which is really unique for youtube would be well over an hour long and still achieve a million views within that short period of time which again youtube prioritizes relatively mid-range content something around 15 to 30 minutes not necessarily necessarily something that is an hour or more longer. And even in this video's comment section, it's clear to see that people not even remotely interested in bodybuilding enjoy his content and like to listen along. The thing is though, if we take a look at his recent stats, it actually looks like he's slowing his progression. Now, I'm not clearly saying that he fell off or anything because it's far from that, but he's definitely on a clear decline in terms of viewership. What exactly has happened is what I'm curious. What's the change in pace? We could say that it's a simple thing that, you know, people just viewed all all his content and it's kind of dried up for a big majority of the audience when he was viral but there's also this sam i'd like you to uh, i'd like to offer you have to obviously take some time and think <laughs> potentially but oh yeah i'd like to offer you a contract with hostile oh shit. so i don't know if you need to take some time to think about it <laughs> obviously we'll have to discuss you know Details. what it's going to look like in detail but yeah since you're not signed with anybody i'd like to extend the offer oh yeah no, that'd be sweet 
See, a little over a year ago now, Fuad, the founder of Hostile and the big guy that we all know is the person doing the Fuad Aviad podcast, offered Sam a contract, which we later found out locked him in with the company for over a whole year. Now, if we look at this strictly from a numbers perspective, typically the reason anyone would sign with a brand is to be, well, to be famous and make more money. But in Sam's case, he literally was almost 10 times bigger than Hostile by just viewership alone. And at the time of signing, he had more followers than all of Hostile's accounts combined, to include Fuad Aviad himself. And at this current moment, he has over 20 times the amount of subscribers just on YouTube. So it's highly unlikely that Sam had any benefit to signing with Hostile in terms of exposure. If anything, it was very much the other way around, because despite Fuad himself being fairly well known as an IFBB pro, his supplement company is quite literally in the shadows compared to the other industry giants. Because of this, it makes a lot of sense that Fuad rushed to get the opportunity to sign this young kid, knowing that he hasn't been around long enough to know any better about sponsorships and what the contracts can actually mean for a person. Really, the intention was very clearly that Fuad, who likes bodybuilding and not necessarily fitness influencing, was looking to make a quick buck through the following of Sam Selleck's audience. And it's been saying, if you sign a contract with Hostile, or Fouad Abiyad, supplement company sponsorship. If you sign a contract with him, you're not allowed to make videos with nobody. Doesn't matter how big or small you are, you can't. You can't go on anyone's podcast, you can't do anything. You can only do the work that Fouad Abiyad says you can do. And that would make a lot of sense. I mean, for example, Sam has been offered to be on many different really big podcasts, such as Bradley Martin's podcast, and even some bro podcasts like RX Muscle, all of which he had to turn down. And the only podcast that he showed up on was, of course, Fuad Abiyad's podcast. And some people might assume that this was just Sam being reserved and he didn't want to go on any podcasts. I know Fuad was very clear at making that statement, but either way you look at it, it's harming his career, and I think he's a very intelligent guy with how he manages his career. I mean, imagine totally blowing up in an industry, and then someone just chains you down and says you're not allowed to interact with anyone else unless we say so. And no, this isn't just speculation based on Sam's choices, this is confirmed by ex-hostile athletes many times over again. Hey, wait. Joe Zapata saw Sam Salik this weekend, right? So he saw Sam Salik or whatever his name is, uh, and he was saying that uh, he, that uh, Sam was telling him, first of all, he loves Lee Priest. He said, I can't talk to him, though, because the guys that are pimping him don't want him talking to him. Okay. So weird. So if we ignore what's going on and just look at the facts of what this relationship binding really meant, it kind of sounds like a weird, abusive, and controlling relationship. And we just happen to turn an eye because Sam has some status. We don't even need to speculate at this point. It's very clear that him signing with Fua definitely hurt his career overall. And just so we're on the same page, Hostile signed on Sam Sulek around July of 2023. Now, if we look at Sam weekly views around the time that he signed up with them, obviously he was rising to fame, but they kind of started to trend downwards shortly after. And then if we look at Hostile's weekly views, they skyrocketed from an average of barely 40k to a couple of hundred thousand per week with ease. So you tell me, looking at these graphs side by side, who benefited more from their contracts? Because it clearly wasn't Sam, and if anything, Hostile cannibalized Sam's viewership. And it's not like it doesn't matter to Sam, as if the rise to fame was just luck, he doesn't mind it getting in the way. Because if that was true, he wouldn't be doing some of the stuff that he does on a regular basis as an influencer. For example, he still posts daily, and so you can't tell me he's not trying his best to make it in the industry. Obviously, his reach was just extremely suppressed by the limitations placed on him by Fuad Abiyad. Let's just take Togi or Toji or whatever the name his name is. I don't know, the drug addict guy who claims he likes to build a physique with steroids even though he doesn't work out and instead gambles all his money away and then gets like really weirdly groomed by other YouTubers paying him thousands and thousands of dollars to gamble, buying him nice watches, flying them in private jets everywhere he goes. Really weird situation there if you ask me. Almost perverse, but that's another video. But he blew up shortly after Sam did. And to be honest, it was probably motivated in part by Sam to use steroids because 
because, well, Sam blew up when he started to use steroids. And it only took him a few months after hitting a point in which he was definitely viral, in which he started to do collaborations with some of the biggest names in the industry, Alex Eubank, Niall, and even Larry Wheels. And now, despite being on the verge of death or jail time, he's been the new big thing in the industry. And we all know this is a past issue, but Nick Walker, the guy that seems to quit at everything he does lately, has even fallen out with Hostile himself over what he stated was the repetitive controlling behavior of Fuad. What Fuad said was that Nick Walker left, and a lot of it was to do with the fact that Nick told Fuad he wasn't going to resign with Hostile in March, or he said probably not. Um, one of the other things that Fuad said was that uh, Nick refused to, to work the booth during the Olympia, the Hostile booth, and also that Nick wasn't willing to do international travel or get a passport. And some people are even speculating that Samson might be next. I knew this was coming. Again, this is the track record that Fuad has with his athletes. They don't stick around that, that long. And I have a, a really good feeling that Samson Dauda is next. I mean, if we take a quick look at Samson's presence on YouTube, again, it's strictly hostile content. And sure, Samson is one of the best in the modern era, especially just winning the Olympia. But his career is probably as equally restricted as his online presence is. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was next to go to seek newer and better things. And outside of Fuad, believe it or not, there's only about six hostile athletes currently. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. If we compare that to a company like Young L LA, for instance, that's been around just a few more years than Hostile has, they have well over 60 athletes in which are sponsored. And not all of them are the biggest names in the industry, but they, for the most part, seem to get along rather well and as a collective produce content together. So just a suggestion, but maybe it's got to do with the way that they treat their athletes, as the Hostile brand, that is. Again, kind of sounds like me that even if you're saying that he can do whatever he wants, it's a little bit, in a sense, speaking for him. 3 million subscribers means virtually nothing if you're deprived from having any personal connections or industry plugs. We're social creatures, not walking billboards, but Fuad Abiyad and the hostile team doesn't necessarily see that as a reality. But it gets worse than that. Is Fuad wrong for charging us to meet Sam? That's the question they're asking. I can't help but look at this situation and not get bothered by it. I don't remember anyone ever having to charge to meet their favorite influencer before. This has never happened in the bodybuilding space before. They did this at the Arnold to all of us to meet Sam and even made some of us buy $200 boxes of supplements to cut the line. I paid the 200, this one's interesting. I paid the $200 to skip the line that day and they ran out of time because Sam left early. I didn't even get to meet Sam and Fuad said he would credit me for the next time. He did it to a bunch of us that were left standing on line when Sam left. I told Fuad I traveled from Europe and most likely would not be able to make the next event and he just smiled at me not offering me a refund. Now, for those of you who don't know, the event that this had happened at was all the same event Fuad happened to throw a tantrum over stepping on a scale at. What's up, bud? What's up? Can I ask you something real quick? Yeah, sure. What are you weighing in at right now? 60 what? 260? Yeah. How tall? Right, right. Go away, verify real quick. What do you want to verify? Yeah. Do it. What are you doing? What are you measuring? Oh, your height? height? Yeah. Okay. And 5'10 would choose. 5'7? 5'10 would choose. Yeah, 5'10. See? <laughs> okay. What are you doing? You got a scale? Of course. All right, let's see if I'm 260. Give me like 257. What are you doing? You, you make, is this for YouTube? Yeah. What's your name? Eric. Eric Kadevsky. Nice to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you. Why would I lie about my weight? Some people do. Most people don't. Never know, right? Fuck yeah. Say sorry. Huh? Say sorry. For what? Making me fucking stand on a scale because you didn't believe me. I believe you. Now yeah. you believe me. So understand. Now say sorry for your YouTube video for making me stand on a scale because you didn't believe me. Why would I say sorry? I'm just because you're implying that I would lie, which is rude. How's that rude? What do you mean how's it rude? You're implying I'm a liar. I didn't imply you're a liar. Of course you did. You brought it on a scale. I check everybody. What do you mean? You too. <laughs> <laughs> like one of those really overweight liberal doctors who tells you that you need to lose weight because your body mass index is high and majoritively that is muscle, yet his is majoritively fat. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, which I talked about in one of my last videos when I was referring to Mike Van Wick, this is what I mean. And then that same guy suspected Fuad just ripped a bunch of people off because he was in a bitchy mood. And to be honest, I don't even entirely doubt that. I mean, does this attitude look like the body language of an honest man? I don't want to interrupt when you finish your call. I have a question. Why is Sam not coming back? I'm sorry? Why is Sam not coming back? Not able to come back today. Why? We wait four hours in line. No, you didn't. What do you mean? We've been here since 10 to 1? No, you have. I have. You paid for the follow-up? You want to see the receipt? Sure. 
Your accent's awesome. Thank you. Very good. It took me all my life. It's not because of me he's not coming back, is it? Because of you. Yeah. Why, do you, why would he not come back to you? I'm asking you. You think I'm going to hold up all these fans? Because I don't even know what you're talking about. I feel like you would, but I don't know. That's I why would, I'm asking. I would. I would. Yeah. You're a dork. Get the fuck out of here. Not in the slightest. I mean, for one thing, there is no way that Fuad is going to recredit that money in the future that was taken and never redistributed again. He would have walked away from the show and willingly forgot about it. But besides that, nobody, and I mean nobody, has ever charged anything just to meet them. If you're famous enough to have a bunch of people who want to meet you, you probably don't need the money that bad. You probably have your own wealth at that point, or at least hopefully, unless you're totally and just gamble it all away. Rich Piana, Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, I mean even Arnold Schwarzenegger. When you think of bodybuilders that these guys were, the biggest names in the industry, they never charged a single cent to go see them, to talk to them, and possibly even get an autograph. If they were at an event in which you were, it was very likely that you could just simply go walk up to them, say hi, how's it going, man, and get a quick picture. And at the end of this, everyone got even more mad because some new stuff was exposed by Nick Tregilly. Sam's gonna explain how cheap Hostile was, and I'm assuming this is why he exited the company. There is still some Sam Sulik product that we've kind of got to get off the shelves. So that's gonna be the... Um, the hostile hostility foundation, some of the blue shark gummy, and the cotton candy. So I, I still get my kickback from those. So Sam was only getting paid $2,000 a month from Hostile. He has a few million on Instagram and a few million on YouTube. The guy's worth more than 2K a month. But once again, Hostile fumbles the bag. This is not the first unicorn that they had on the team that they fumbled the bag with. It's just another one that they're gonna to add to the list and probably kick themselves in the asses when they look back in hindsight when the company's gone. Sam was only getting paid a mere $2,000 per month. To put that into perspective, that is how much I would luckily make on this channel in AdSense if I had each video I posted do about 30,000 to 50,000 views. When we're looking at Sam, he should be making a quite handsome amount compared to me. And then we had John Bravo trying to disprove this claim, yet his only reliable source of information was Fuad himself, so I don't really know how reliably this was reported. At the end of the day, it wouldn't have been about the money for Sam. Obviously, he just didn't like the way that he was treated, and as much as you want to say, oh, Sam likes to do his own thing, Sam's experience wasn't the first one that gave Fuad a slightly bad reputation. Like I said earlier, Nick Walker left, Justin Shear left, Brett Wilkins left, the British crew left, I mean basically everybody left. And they're all really big names and you could say people leave companies all the time, but with Hostile only having six athletes, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it does seem a little suspicious. Something has to be going on behind closed doors that they don't want to talk about, nor do the people signing with them want to be a part of. And so Sam decided not to re-sign with Fuad, which I think was a brilliant choice because Sam could do his own thing, whatever that was, even if it was just selling programs and make way more money than Fuad ever could in his supplement business. And I hope for his sake that his career continues to flourish. It doesn't look like it's at all falling apart, it just took a small hit. But what can you expect from a guy that likes to be on his own for the most part? But on the other hand, we have guys like Fuad Abiyad, and I'm sure it's not going to be surprising when we see him running head over heels for the newest viral athlete in the space, even if they're not a competitive bodybuilder, which is the whole point he built hostile supposedly. But hopefully knowing what we know with the track record of Hostile, we can see those athletes know a little bit better by now. And I want to make it very clear that this video isn't about Fuad being a bad person because he's done some very good things for the industry. But just like anybody, he has some tumultuous things in his past. And I think what's important to know is that every company's objective, whether it's in bodybuilding, golfing, or just your normal capitalism, is to make money. They have to stay afloat, and to be honest, which most people don't don't actually understand until they start their own business, it is extremely expensive to operate a business. I mean, extremely expensive. Even small businesses can sometimes cost tens of thousands of dollars to run per month. And so just operating the business at a basic level to make your own money so that you can live, you need to do what you can to boost those profit margins. So I'm not necessarily saying Fuad is wrong here because I understand a business needs to make money to be successful. But I also think it does burn 
burn quite a bit of bridges and does taint the personal image of himself as well as the company. Now, it is a little bit weird when you get to signing athletes because you do have to hold them accountable to you as a company, but you should also allow them to have the freedom to be able to collaborate and post as they will. And instead of saying you absolutely cannot communicate with other influencers or other podcasts or do anything of the like, you should just say rather, hey, if you go on a podcast, wear our shirt or talk about our product for at least a minute. Something that's more inclusive and less restrictive. But what do you guys think down below? Is Hostile a highly restrictive brand that keeps its athletes from going to where they could go? Or is this all just some kind of made up theory that is completely inaccurate to what's really going on? As always, I love reading your comments down below. It's super interesting to me and it's one of my favorite parts of posting videos every day. And if you guys don't know, I'm teamed up with Modern Aminos. I have a discount code there. Coach Colton is the discount code, all one word. It will get you a hefty amount off of all of your needs of research chemicals, which very interesting way we work with that. You have to be an institution. YouTube, they have to be institutionalized. We can't just give them products, okay? So this isn't illegal. This isn't a gray area. You have to be an institution. So go to the checkout and make sure you assign your institution before you get any research products. I've been using Sloopy or the estrogen agonist, and it has been very effective for me. This is S-L-U-P-P, -P, whatever the numbers are. I've just remembered it as Sloopy at this point, and I tell everybody it's Sloopy. And it's worked great at increasing my cardiovascular endurance. There's that along with many other compounds which are available for research purposes only that you can test out. That is, if you're an institution. But I'll see you in the next video. If you can, subscribe. It does me a massive favor, and it's completely free to you.